We'll quickly go over the Lightroom interface. To browse your photos, you just need to go to the left-hand panel and either choose the Cloud tab or the Local tab. The Cloud tab is where all your photos that are synced to the Adobe Creative Cloud are. And these photos are also available on your Lightroom mobile apps due to cloud syncing. Now, if you want to view your photos that are available on your local hard drive, you just click on the local tab here, and then you find the corresponding folder that contains your photos. So right now I'm under the Argentina folder under some subfolders. And this is one of the photos I took in Patagonia on the northern side. We'll work from the cloud tab since this version of Lightroom is mainly for mobile editing and cloud syncing. Now on the left hand side is where you do most of your magic. So you have some of your edit options and your presets. And on the bottom you can scroll or view the thumbnails of your photos. And there's different ways to view your photos if you click on these little thumbnails here. Or these icons. You can also add star ratings and flags. And if I go to this photo here and click right here this is the before and after if i click on this icon here here's the before and here's the after and if i want to hide this i can just click on this if i want to hide this panel i can just click on this if you want to import photos into your cloud drive you can just click on this add photos button or what you can do is you can drag the photos into the lightroom interface so i already have three photos that i'm going to drag from a different folder and I'm going to bring it into Lightroom. And now this dialog pops up. It's going to automatically select these photos. And I just click on add three photos. Now these photos have been selected and are now inside my Lightroom Adobe Creative Cloud. So it's syncing right now. So it's syncing these three photos and they're going to sync to my Lightroom mobile as well. So I'll just get out of this just now view and go to all photos. And now you can see these three photos that I've just added or imported into Lightroom. If I want to sort the photos, I go to this icon right here, click on it. And then I have a few options here. Right now, the photos are sorted by capture date. If I want, I can select import date. And now the sorting has been changed. Remember, these are the three most recent photos that I imported. What I can also do is I can add star ratings and flag the photos. So I'm just going to double click on this photo to open it up and I'll give it a star rating of five and select accept. This next photo, I'll give it a four and accept. This one, a one and reject. This one, a one and reject. Now I'll go back to the thumbnail view here. Now, if I want to search for these photos that I tagged, I just go to search all photos here and then I can click on equal to or greater than, let's say three stars. I'll X that right here. I can choose five stars, X that. I can also select the accepted photos that I selected and so forth. What I can also do is I can search the photos by different camera settings and metadata information. For example, I can choose a shutter speed. I can select one over 1000 and this is the photo that I took. I'll just X out of that. Lightroom also has Adobe Sensei, so it allows you to search for photos by just putting in a keyword. So I can put in mountain here. And it should try to find photos with a mountain. I can X out of that. I'll put a building. Let's see if it finds any photos with a building. So it does find this photo and does find this photo here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but for the most part, it's pretty good. So I'll just close this search here. What I can also do is I can go to this photo here. I'll click on it to show you a little bit better. I can also add keywords to the photo. So if I select this icon right here, I can tag a keyword to it and I can put land iguana and I'll press enter. So I'll go back to the thumbnail view here. I'll go to search all photos and then I can search by keyword. And these are the different keywords that my current photos have. So I can select land iguana. I can double click on it. One other cool thing is you can also select this icon or information tab right here. And you can see where I took the photo. These are the GPS coordinates and these will only show up if GPS coordinates are enabled on your mobile phone or on your camera. That is if it has GPS recording on it. And then there's also the regular metadata information of the photo. Lightroom further allows us to organize photos through albums. So we can put some of these photos in a new album or put it in an album that I already created right here, my DNG files. 
By the way, these two photos are grayed out because they are selected as rejected here. So I'll undo that so that we can see their color. Anyways, what we'll do is we will create a new album here. So I'll click on this plus sign here. I'll create album. I'll put it test one and I'll click on create. So I'll double click on it. So there's nothing in it. I'll go back to all photos. I will select these three photos here and move it into test one. So here we have the three photos that we selected. We also have the option of creating smart albums. So I'll create a smart album here and I'll show you how that works in a second. I'll just name it SM, SMART1 and we can put it in a folder if we want. So a folder is just a hierarchy or it's a parent grouping of albums. So there's albums and then albums could be sorted into folders if you want to do that. And we can create a folder by clicking on the plus sign here, but I'll show you that in a second. Anyways, I need to add a new rule. So I'll add a new rule and I'll select a rating of anything that's equal to or greater than three. I'll click on create. So now I have this smart album right here. And you can see these are the two photos that have a rating of three or higher right here. And now going back to the folders, if I want, I can create a folder here, but I'm not going to do that. It's pretty easy. And then you can organize your albums into folders. And then there's also a few options here to sort your albums. I'm going to level the horizon and crop this landscape photo. So I'm going to go to the crop tool here. And I'm going to choose the straighten tool and click and hold this slider. And you can notice the guides come up. So I'm just going to level the horizon with the guides and let go of the slider. And now that looks good. Now I can crop it by selecting one of these sides or corners. And you can notice the aspect ratio is locked. I want to unlock it. I can just click right here. And now I can crop freely. I can also select a aspect. I can choose 16 by nine and that's the classic 16 by nine right there. And then I'm going to crop it to my liking. Now you can notice this rule of thirds right here guide that's showing up. If I want to change the guides, I can go to this crop overlay and then I can select the different types of guides, but I'll just keep it on the rule of thirds and let's put it like this. And I think I like it like that. Actually, I want to crop this part out. That looks good. And I'll press enter to accept the crop. We're going to make a few basic adjustments to this landscape photo I took in the Canadian Rockies. Right now I'm in the edit section and the color profile is Adobe Color. The color profile controls how Lightroom renders the image from a RAW file or a JPEG. Usually I just stick with the Adobe Color, which is the standard these days. Before it was Adobe Standard. If I go to Adobe Landscape, it actually does a pretty good job with the saturation, but I'll just stick with Adobe Color just to make everything consistent throughout this tutorial. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Light. And you can see this histogram. It's a little bit on the darker side, it looks like. So I'll move the blacks to the right a little bit. And then the highlights or the whites, actually, I'll move it to the right. I'll add a little bit of contrast. That's already looking pretty good. Now let's take a look at the color. I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance. Add a little bit of saturation. And give it a little bit of a warmer tone to it. So I'll move the temperature to the right and increase the yellow slightly. That looks good. Now let's go to the effects panel here. I'll add a little bit of clarity, which adds midtone contrast. And then I'm going to increase the dehaze, which helps remove some of the haze or debris in the sky, which is really good when there's a lot of forest fires in the area. And then I'm going to go to the vignette right here. And I'm going to darken the corners by moving this slider to the left. And that looks pretty good. So here's the before and here's the after. Here's the before and here's the after. 
If I want, I can view different versions of this photo or undo it by going to this clock icon here. And there's no different versions actually, there's only the original. So if I want to undo these, I can press Ctrl or Command Z to undo some of these adjustments I did. Or if I want to reset it all, I can go to this ellipsis here and I can click on Reset Edits. We'll take a look at applying presets to save time editing an image. So I'll click on the preset section here. And these are all the premium presets that come with the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription right here. And these are my own presets. And I think these basic ones are the free ones that come with a free Lightroom mobile app. So let's take a look at black and white here. And if I hover over them, you can see the image being adjusted. I do have my own right here that I created the Aperless colors. So I'll just go with chestnut and it looks good. It has like a type of a sepia tone, but I'll just decrease the highlights a little bit and the whites to make the image look a little bit better. If you do want to create your own preset, you can click on this plus sign here and then save whichever adjustments you want to and name the preset. I photographed this beautiful land iguana in the Galapagos Islands, but this photo is a little bit ruined by this post sign right here. So I want to remove it. So I'm going to go to the remove tool right here and I'm just going to stick with the remove tool and I'm going to use use generative AI and then I'm going to select an appropriate size brush. So I'm going to increase it a little bit and then I'm going to paint over it right here just like that. So now it's selected this area and then I'm going to click on remove. It does take a few seconds to process here. And once it does process, it's going to give me a few different variations. So this looks pretty decent. I can select a different variation by clicking on this arrow here. So that looks even better. This is a three. So number two and number three look good. So I'll just stick with number two, which is fine. And then I can just make some subtle adjustments here. I can increase the shadows. I can add some contrast, increase the shadows a little bit more, move the blacks here. Then I can add a little bit of color, vibrance and saturation. And now this image looks a lot better. So let's take a look at the before and after. So just with a few steps in a few seconds, we were able to correct this image. So this image that I took of the Milky Way looks okay when we're zoomed out, when we're in the fit view. But if I click on the image and zoom in, you can see there's a lot of noise here, which is called luminance noise. The other would be called color noise, which is usually spots of red or green and sometimes even blue or purple. So I'm in the detail section here and I'm going to move the luminance slider to remove some of the luminance noise or the white color noise. So that image looks a lot better now. So let's take a look at the before and after. So it looks a lot better. One thing I do want to do is I want to sharpen it a little bit more. Now this area looks a little bit soft. So I'm gonna increase the sharpening. This is the default sharpening. And if I click on this eye right here, it'll show you without the sharpening and the without the noise. So I want to increase the sharpening, but one thing you got to be careful with noisy images is when you increase sharpening, you sometimes increase the noise or sharpen the noise. So what I'm going to do is click on this masking and I'm going to click on it while holding the option or alt key. And that'll show you the white area where the sharpening will be applied. So I just want to apply it to the stars. So that looks a lot better. So now I can increase it a little bit more freely, the sharpening slider. So I'll just stick at that. Let's take a look here. Let's take a look at the before and after. You may not be able to see it on your screen without it being full view, but I can definitely notice it from my view, the noise being reduced. I want to bring a little bit more focus and the viewer's eyes to this Milky Way cluster right here. And I'm going to do that with masking. So I'll select the masking tool right here. And there's a few different options, but I'm going to choose the radial gradient, which makes a circular mask. So I clicked on it. 
and I'm going to click, hold and drag out and create a mask here. And I'll let go of the mouse button. Now I can see this overlay here and the red area is where the mask is going to be applied. And I can rotate this mask by right here. So if I move my mouse outside right here, you can see the double arrow and I can rotate it. Then I can click here, move it around. I can click here, make this mask bigger a little bit. And right here, the center, this is the feather of the mask. I'm just going to make a really good feather, very feathery. The feather is the transition of the mask or the adjustments. And right now it's at 74. Okay, so I have the mask ready. So let's see what I want to do. I'll go to the light area here. I'll increase the highlights. Map the whites a little bit more. And let's see what happens with the blacks. I'll move the blacks a little bit. And then I'll move the shadows to the right a little bit. And with the point curve tool, I'll increase the midtones. And then with the color, let me see here. I will stick with a tint of purple or magenta like this. I'll put it at 10. By the way, I'm doing a few advanced edits, but don't worry about it. Just follow how I make adjustments and how the mask gets impacted with the image. I'll be going over some of these advanced tools in my future masterclass of Lightroom. Anyways, now I'll increase the saturation. Let's take a look here. I'll go to the point color tool right here. I'll select this. And I'll try to select a, like a purplish area right here. So I selected this purplish area. I'll increase the saturation a little bit more. Increase the luminance a little bit more. And I think I'll just keep it at that for now. So I don't overdo it while I'm trying to teach you guys the masking tool. So let's get out of here. Let's go to the edit section. And let's take a look at the before and after this is the before and this is the after and this includes the noise reduction as well when you want to export a photo you can right click on a photo which will bring up this menu and you can go to export photo right here which will give you a few different options you can also select multiple photos by selecting one and then shift clicking the next batch of photos right here and then doing the same thing with the right click on the mouse I can also click on this icon here, which is the upload button. And I have the export settings as well as a few presets. I'll select custom settings. And here are the photos and I can put different settings for each one if I want. I can also include a watermark. And if I want to change the watermark, I can click on this gear icon. And there's a few different settings right here. And if you want to finalize and export the photos, you can just click right here and then you can choose your destination. I'll just cancel out of this. Another option is to create a link to your photos. So I can click on this upload icon again and I can click on get a link. And then you'll be able to share your photo through cloud syncing or cloud storage. And then you'll be able to use this link and share it. And there's different settings right here. And then I'll come up under these share photos right here, which is grayed out right now. But I'll click on cancel. And that's pretty much it for this uh, Lightroom uh, crash course. I hope you guys learned a lot. I did go a little bit fast on some of the advanced settings. But as I said, I'll cover that in a later tutorial. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.